So recently, John Oliver, who's got his own show on HBO, did a video on multi-level marketing and network marketing that prompted hundreds of emails and messages to be sent our way saying, Pat, what do you think about what John Oliver said about network marketing? And Mario and I went and watched a video and I went through it. And one of the things I love about comedians, let me tell you what I love about comedians. Sometimes I enjoy watching a comedian's point of view about a political thing more than CNN, MSNBC, and Fox. Here's why. A John Stewart, which I love, John Stewart would sit there and he would talk about how terrible Republicans were because of something they did. And all the Republicans would get upset at him. Then the next day he would do a video on liberals and Democrats. So you could always see that he would give both sides, which was great. You can see comedians, even though John leaned a little bit left, he still was willing to give both sides uh, of his uh, uh, beliefs. And I liked it. I think comedians have the opportunity to do that. They have the way to say things that are funny, which many people want to say, and they can get away with it because at the end of the day, they say, say what? I'm just a comedian. I didn't mean anything by it. I'm just a comedian. So it's cool. I was a bit, I was a bit disappointed with John Oliver because his method on how great he is on the comedian side, uh, uh, he could have taken this thing on multi-level marketing and network marketing to give both sides, but I thought he only gave one side of it. And today, what I want to do with you is I want to completely break it down. I'm going to cover six things with you on today's video about network marketing. One is, what is network marketing? What is MLM? Why is it that everybody somehow, someway, at some point of their lives had some kind of an affiliation, whether they're a client or joined or father or mother or brother or somehow, someway, you've been touched by a network marketing company. So what is network marketing? We'll cover the common criticisms. We'll cover the different types of compensation plans. Network marketing companies have different types of products the benefits of it, and if you're going to do it, which company should consider getting involved in? Not necessarily company. I won't give a company, but I will give things that you ought to be thinking about. So first of all, what is network marketing? Let me tell you what is network marketing. Network marketing is not an industry. This is the one thing that most people don't know about. And before I get into explaining to you why I have, uh, 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 I'm explaining network marketing and getting deep into it the way I am is, I used to work at Valley Total Fitness many years ago when I got out of the Army at 20 years old. One thing MLMers and network marketers will do is they love targeting gym salesmen because people who work at a gym know everybody. We know the nightclubs, we know the folks that sell the drugs, we know the girls, we know the uh, uh, bartenders, we know everybody. Gym, we know everybody. I mean, if you want to get into anything, talk to people that sell memberships at a gym. We are connected with everybody. Everyone comes to the gym and the best guys at the gym are connected with everybody. So everyone was trying to recruit me and everybody else to a network marketing company. So eventually, one of my friends told me about this one thing, and he, you know, back, back in the days was VHS, v video. And he gives me this video, which I said, come on, give me, and I had no idea what network marketing was, nothing. I had just come out of the Army, and in the Army, one of our sergeants, who was an E8, was making $150,000 per year in a legal network marketing company, meaning a legal, uh, uh, what do you call it, like law, and it, it was called prepaid legal back in the days. And it was making 150, and everybody knew about it. Everybody, it was legit. He was making 150, so he was making 60 as a master sergeant, but he was making 150 as a network. So I knew there was something there, but I didn't fully know about it. Long story short, long story short, I get this video one day. I'm ticked off on my job. I go at night. It's two o'clock in the morning. I put the video in. I just came home from a nightclub, and I'm so pissed off. I put the video in. An hour and a half into it, it was a one and a half hour video. I said, I'm interested. I called the guy, I got started, it was $1,500, I got involved, I put on my credit card, and then after, uh, I had a certain guy was working with, they call it the upline, he changed seven different companies. So, at that time, you just follow and you do whatever you do, because he's 20, I'm 20, and he's older than me, so hey, we're going to go to the next one, this one's going to be better, and we're going to go to the next one, this one's going to be better. So, we went from selling uh, these websites to all of a sudden it was this your own uh, uh, thing that people can click on, and then it was some dental plan benefits, and then it was an online sales store that you're gonna have, all these things. And then finally I said, don't call me, don't touch me, don't talk to me, don't approach me about anything to do with any of this stuff because I'm so annoyed because friends thought of you as only selling something, all this, I'm 20, 21 years old at this time. So I said, I'm going back to pure traditional business, and I went to Morgan Stanley Dean Witter. That's when I got my Series 7, 66, 31, 26, Life and Health, all that stuff. I went purely financial. But what I did do during that time, when I left it, I said, there is something very attractive about this that turns people on. Why is that? And I investigated the entire industry to find out exactly what worked and what didn't work, 
And that's what I'm presenting to you here today. So what is network marketing? Here's what network marketing is. Network marketing is not an industry. Direct marketing is not an industry. Even MLM multi-level marketing is not an industry. It's a philosophy of marketing. That's all it is. It's a philosophy of marketing. Marketing is a certain strategy you use to get the customer's attention that eventually ends up buying your product. That is all network marketing is. Let me explain. There are about 150 different ways you can market your product. I'm going to just give you an example about 14 of them here. You can go direct marketing. What is direct marketing? Direct marketing is for me to sell my product by going directly to Mario. So I'm going directly to consumer, okay? Or I'm going directly to the business. I'm going direct. Mario, I have this product. Let me show it to you. Will you buy it? Yes, $600. I exchange merchandise for product. I leave. I make $200 on the product. That is direct marketing. And I make $200 on the sale I made. You have email marketing. For many years, oh my gosh, people who did email marketing were called the biggest con artists because you kept getting all these, this is only an elite thing that I'm doing that only seven people are going to be a part of and you have the opportunity to be part of the seven and people, oh my gosh, i got to be part of it and it worked. And I thought it was very effective. A lot of people said these are con artists. They're purely con artists. It's a marketing method. There's a creative part to it. Some do email marketing. Some do telemarketing. It's a philosophy of marketing where people run a call center. They run big call centers of people that you know nothing about and they make calls and enough people buy and you throw enough against the wall. People, so, but it works. It's effective for some people and it works. The other one is affiliate marketing. What's affiliate marketing? Affiliate marketing is, hey, let us put this on your website. If somebody clicks on it, we'll give you $3. If somebody buys the products, we'll give you $25. Affiliate marketing. Another one is network marketing. What is network marketing? I am marketing my product to who? To my network. That's all it is. I am marketing my product to my network. That's network marketing. Network marketing isn't all these juice and all these other companies. That's a network. No, it's not. That's network marketing is marketing to my network. Multi-level marketing is what? So network marketing could be when ING Direct back in the days would say, if you help somebody else open up an ING Direct account, we'll give you $25. That's network marketing. But... Multi-level marketing is, says the following. If you find somebody else who refers ING and they open up an account, we'll pay him $25 and we'll pay you $5. Now it becomes levels. So it's multi-level. Multi-level marketing. We'll pay two generations. That's where the level comes in. Then you have guerrilla marketing. Guerrilla marketing is, you know, some guys would come out with their own CD and they want to go out there and do guerrilla marketing in the streets and just hitting a ton, a ton of people at the same time. It's effective. Some call that a very, you know, con and deceptive way of doing it. It's effective. Many major hip hop people that you respect in the world started with guerrilla marketing. Many movie guys that started off with their first short film, they started off with guerrilla marketing. Now the world respects them. Behavior marketing. Let me study this person's behavior who goes, you know, sometimes people say, hey, you know, what's the weirdest thing that happened today? I went on this website and just two days ago, I clicked on a website to buy furniture and today every website I go to, this furniture is coming in. There's something weird going on. No, it's called behavior marketing. Hey, that's a little bit deceptive. It's marketing and people buy the product because they're simply seeing your fingerprints of where you touch and they're going to it. Next one is digital marketing. What's digital marketing? Social media. It's very, very effective. Now, social media, some people could say, I am so sick and tired of seeing this video ad of, you know, he keeps coming up. Every time I watch a video, this guy keeps coming up. This guy keeps coming up. This guy keeps coming up. It works. Digital marketing. Celebrity marketing. Hey, I use this product. It changed my life and it's a celebrity. I am a famous, I use this thing. Athletes do it all the time. I mean, MJ, Haynes, LeBron, you know, shoes. Everybody, celebrity marketing, Shaq, Kia. Shaq is doing cars. Shaq's doing cars he doesn't even fit in. Here, that's celebrity marketing is what it is, right? Then you have uh, cross marketing. Hey, real estate with accounting. Let me do, you know, magazines and newspapers. Cross marketing. I'm going to find a product, team up with this guy, and we cross market our products to each other. Next, trade show marketing. Some people go do trade shows. That's all they talk about. I am very successful at trade shows. And some people would say, I would never do a trade show. It's so annoying. There are many successful trade show marketers. Then you have TV marketing. A lot of people do TV uh, advertisement. You don't think, if there's anything that's the highest level of manipulation, it's TV marketing. You know why? 
hey, if you drink this beer, you're going to get laid. What do you think beer companies do? I mean, tell me there's anything lower than TV marketing on what some people do. Hey, hey, you know, you just you take this pill and erections may last for the rest of your life and everybody in the world is going to want to see your erection and you're going to be the man and you're going to feel like, and then we're like, oh my God, man, give me one of those things I want an erection that lasts a lifetime. And at the end, somebody says, hey, if your erection lasts a lifetime, go see a doctor. And I said, medical, give me a breath. That is manipulative, but people work. Why are people buying Viagra so much? Because it's called TV marketing. How come nobody's taking shots of TV marketing? I'd love to see somebody do that. And then you have radio, which radio nowadays, I think there's only three people that listen to the radio today. So is it three or is it four people that listen to radio? Mario, how many people listen to radio today? It's three people. Mario knows no, the radio is not what it used to be, but people do radio marketing. I think the best people in radio marketing are those who sell radio because it is a dying industry. And I have to tell you, some of the best salespeople in the world are those who sell radio time. You are good. And you, you got me to spend some money. I spent $100,000 on radio in 2009, 2010. I think I did. Uh, and it didn't work. But I spent hundred grand on it, right? So now, all that said and done, Network marketing and multi-level marketing and direct marketing is a philosophy of how you market your product. And do you know why companies do network marketing? Let me explain to you why companies do network marketing. Here's why. Because the cost to get, the cost acquisition to get the customer is cheaper. I don't have to do a TV ad and spend $400,000. I simply give it cheaper and I have somebody else go sell it and I have, I don't know, I can pay more to the field or whatever it is. There's still a problem there that I'm going to get into that I don't like what they do in network marketing. But there's a reason why people do network marketing. Cost is cheaper to get the consumer. Now, this is network marketing. This is what we're talking about with network marketing. A lot of times people like to say it's another pyramid scheme. By the way, here's what a pyramid scheme is so everybody understands and they stop saying it. Every time somebody says pyramid scheme, you sound uneducated. And I'll tell you why. Because in a pyramid scheme, a product doesn't exist. There's a reason why Amway Herbalife hasn't gone out of business yet, and they're still in business. And, you know, you have Beckham who wears an Herbalife shirt, and you have the Orlando Magic that play in the Amway arena. There's a reason for that. That's not accidental. If they were a pyramid scheme, they would be closed down. In a pyramid scheme, I remember when I was working at Bally's, a guy approached me and he showed me this thing. He said, hey, you pay $500 to me. I keep $200 of it, $100 goes to the guy above me, and $100 goes above me, but you go out there and get five other people that pay $500, and then they get 500 people, and then you get five other people, you're gonna make $100,000 in a month. I said, what's the product? There is no product, that's the great thing about it. There is no product. I said, what are you, what are you talking, you're a con artist. He was a con artist. Six months later, he went to prison. I think he did five years in prison for doing that. That's exactly what needs to happen to people that run pyramid schemes. Here's another one, when people say it's a Ponzi scheme, most people don't even know the history of Ponzi scheme. Ponzi scheme came from a guy whose name is Charles Ponzi. Again, I'm trying to give you history because I wanted to find out if this business is good or bad. I have to find out everything about this business. Charles Ponzi was a con artist who was an Italian businessman. I want to say in the 20s. Uh, was it 20s or 30s? Something like that. In the 20s. Yeah. And he did business in U.S. and he did business in Canada. What he would do is he would come to you and tell you, if you give me $100, I'll return it to you with $150 on 60 days, and I'll give you $200 within 90 days. He was the first original Bernie Madoff type of guy who made, I think, $10 million during that time, which is a lot of money. Before there was Bernie Madoff, there was Charles Ponzi. So that's why people say this is a Ponzi scheme. But in a Ponzi scheme, there is no product. Money just moves. And when money only moves with no products, you're going straight to prison. And by the way, you belong in prison when you do things like that and try to rip off people. There's nothing cool. There's a, if capitalism ever gets a bad name because, because people try to win in the game of capitalism with shortcuts and they try to hurt people, and those people belong in prison. That needs to happen. This is not something that you need to go out there and abuse. It needs to happen. If somebody goes out there and fights in UFC, and you go out there in your gloves, you put rocks in there, so you can, it used to happen back in the days in boxing, so you can punch somebody and nobody feels the rock. The guy feels it, he breaks his jaw. Hey man, that's, that's cheating. You need to go out there and get out of the entire boxing world. So I'm not okay with that. So in today's message, I'm gonna get very neutral. I'll give you both sides as well. So this is types of marketing. Products that we have. We have telecommunication, that back in the days there used to be a company called Excel. 
the founder of XL, I believe, started with calling cards. He eventually ended up having a horse that was in the Kentucky Derby that raced in the Derby. If you go find out about the founder of XL, his net worth is somewhere around two to four billion dollars. I don't know exact number, but it's around two to four billion dollars. Because calling cards were very, very big. And guess who wanted calling cards? Everybody wanted calling cards in the 80s, but it didn't do well. Then in the 90s, there was ACN that came out with, they were competing with Quest, 499 service, but I think it was 4.9 cents a minute type of thing, and then that went away. And then you have some of the companies today. Technology is by far the worst type of company to even consider being a part of because it changes so quickly. There was a company called FutureNet that came out with a set-top box, and they were selling it for $600. So people would come to your house, and they would sit there, and they would sit this on the top of the TV, and they would say, hey, watch this. While you're watching TV, next thing you know, you chat on the bottom on AO with anybody else. And people were amazed by it. Everybody was buying this for $600. This company called FutureNet came out, and they were selling so many of them. They were doing so well. Eventually, Sears came out and sold the same exact system for $99. They went out of business like this. So technology wasted time. Energy, it happens if you got a good story today. There's ways of doing it for gas, other things. Water. There's a lot of different water stories. I remember one time one water story guy came out to introduce his product to us. For, great guy, phenomenal guy, very nice guy. But he took us to a restaurant with my dad, and my dad at that time was having heart problems. And he told my dad, he says, look, you want to look younger? You want to look younger? Let me tell you how you ought to look younger. He starts spraying on my dad's face the water. My dad, he doesn't like it when people touch him, let alone spray water on his face without asking permission. My dad in Assyrian cursed him out in every single possible word you can think about in Assyrian. He said, we are getting the F out of here right now. And I said, look, we got to go. I took my dad out. But there's water companies that they sell the machine for 4500 bucks. Uh, skin, my wife. Let me tell you about my wife. I said, babe, you want to buy Mac? No, babe. My wife likes three companies. Alta, which is not a network. It's a traditional company. Alta that competes with Sephora. They have these big 8,000 square foot places. They do a very good job. Alta does. She likes Alta, she likes Youngblood, and she likes Arbonne. I believe Youngblood and Arbonne are network marketing, and she's never joined either one of them. But she loves their product. So it works very well on the skin side. Coffee, tea, berry, there's a lot of those Noni companies. And you have the coffee companies that are out there. Legal, I think it's Legal Shield now, it used to be Prepay Legal. Nutritionals, you have Amway, you have Shackley, you have Melaleuca, you have Herbalife, you have many of them there. Travel, they used to be... Uh, a big travel company back in the 80s and 90s that was doing because travel agencies were used to, you used to buy your products. Nowadays, it's all online. There's actually a good story for a travel company today that gives discounts. So you buy discounted rates, and it's very effective. Now, how you sell it is the problem. I went to a travel meeting one time with a friend, Diana. We sat in the room, and the speaker gets up, and he says, look, let me tell you why I love our company. I recently got a divorce a year ago. And when we go on these trips, in our company, we have a divorce trip. And on these divorce trips that you go together, guess what happens on these divorce trips? You know what happens on these divorce trips? Everybody's divorced. Everybody's in the market. Hey. And they start talking about sex and all this other. And young guys are like, I'm going to go to a divorce party. I'm like, first of all, great marketing effort to convince young guys to go out there for the sex part. It's like the military recruiters that would say, Hey, the moment you put your uniform, everyone wants to have sex with you. It's effective. And it's actually somewhat true. It's a little, you know, it's just, I don't like that approach. But some people take that approach. That was a travel experience I had in the past. Nevertheless, the industry, there's a lot of effective ways. There's weed. We, <laughs> this was funny. Where it's, a, you know, we have a weed network marketing. Truly, it's a weed network marketing company. You have sex toys. Mario knew about one very, very well back in the days sex toys company and literally when I tell you sex toys it is literally sex toys so you get together and everybody shows the sex toys and there, there's some extracurricular activities that sometimes that watch how many people are gonna uh, search right now sex toys MLM <laughs> you'll see a bunch of them you'll send them a link send a message to Mario send you the link Mario we're proud of you and then the last one is financial products and let me tell you one thing about financial products uh, 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 Gary Keller wrote a book called The One Thing. Gary Keller, the founder of Keller Williams. He wrote the book called The One Thing. If you go online and type in Keller Williams and you type in MLM, you'll see a bunch of accusations of saying this is a network marketing company, which by the way, anybody that's been part of uh, Keller Williams that I've worked with and I asked them, is it a network marketing company? Yes, there's components of us. They have 150,000 licensed agents in America. No real estate company has more licensed agents than Keller Williams. They got criticized for the longest time. 
No one cares today. They are insane status. Matter of fact, the multi-million dollar home that I just recently bought is bought from an agent that works for Keller Williams, and she is absolutely the most ridiculous real estate agent I've ever bought a home from. And I've bought it from, she's the most amazing one I've ever bought a home from. She's with Keller Williams, and it's a network marketing company. By the way, New York Life, a lot of people like to bash New York Life. You go online and you type in New York Life pyramid scheme and network marketing and MLM, all these negative things that have come up, and you'll see one thing about uh, uh, New York Life is New York Life last year did $27 billion in revenues. I think they got roughly 12,000 employees, and their net revenues last year was around $2 billion. This was New York Life. But today, nowadays, anybody and everybody could, bo could go bash anybody. But these are some of the things. And by the way, there's many out there as well on companies, philosophies. I run a financial for myself, and I can tell you for myself, there is a component of network marketing that I love because it's so effective because I can pay a higher comp to my guys if I choose to. Now, with that being said, with that being said, let me get into a few things when you think about network marketing that has a bad rep. What gives network marketing a bad rep? So let me go through the criticism of network marketing myself. So here's, here's where it is. Let me pull this up. Okay, so a few things about MLM and network marketing that you got to think about that's a bad rep. One, people that join everything. It is extremely annoying. No one likes it. You lose friends. Every other day you want to sell a new product. Everyone, just so you know, people get tired of it. I experienced it at 20 years old. Every single one of my friends said, listen, I don't want to do anything with it. So from 20 to 21, there was a period my friends are, I don't want to do anything. That's why I said I will never touch anything again that has to do anything with network marketing. I don't want to do it. I went straight to Morgan Stanley Dean Witter, and I chose the financial industry to be a part of. But originally, there are a lot of people that want to join everything and anything, and they tell people, hey, you should join this, hey, you should join this, hey, you should, hey, I found this thing, I found this thing, I found this. It's too much. It's like becoming a, you're prostituting products. You're becoming promiscuous with everybody. You want to sleep with everybody. It's a turnoff, and there's a lot of that in network marketing. That's a turnoff. Second one, um, they have something new to sell every single month, similar to the other one I told you about. One month, they're selling you some uh, a travel product. The next month, it's a Tahitian noni drink that's going to change your life. The next day is a water you're going to drink that you're going to eat, you know, be younger 10 years. Every day there's something new to sell. Number three, inventory and garage. That's very problematic. Now, let me tell you why it's problematic. Overselling a product that a person cannot afford and shouldn't buy. Hey, come buy $5,000 worth of products. Why are you doing that? That person doesn't need it. And number two, if you don't have a track record of selling a lot of products, why would somebody be doing that? Why would somebody be doing that? I think a person... If you're going to sell a product, sell the amount of product that someone's going to use, get to like the product, you got to like the product, then they will tell you if they want to buy more products and you can show them other elements of the product that's effective. Saying go buy $5,000 worth of products to succeed that they never use that end up on eBay, which they paid $5,000 for and they sell it on eBay for $600, that's a ripoff. That's not something you ought to be doing. And sometimes in network marketing that does happen, which is a Bad rep. The next one, this is the one that's very annoying to most people. Get rich quick message. This whole thing about, you know, you're going to be a millionaire in no time and we're going to go out there and become millionaires in the next six months and 12 months and all this stuff. People don't like that. It's deceptive. It's not something you ought to be doing. Misrepresentations such as, this is the cure to cancer. We have the cure to aging. This makes you happy. If you eat this, you will have more energy. It'll improve your sex life. It'll improve this. That's great, it's too much. This whole cure thing of misrepresenting anything, it's way too much. And it happens a lot, a lot. It happens, this misrepresentation happens way too much in the world of network marketing and gives, gives it a bad product. Here's the other one that's very concerning is when a company comes, when a guy comes up to you and sells you to a company like this, hey, who cares what the product is, man? We have the best compensation plan. Listen, run away as far as possible. When they sell compensation plan first, product second, I have a problem. When they sell compensation plan first and product second, we have a very, very big problem. It's got to be product first, then compensation plan. You first got to buy into the product. But there are a lot of people that sell compensation plan first. Matter of fact, you'll see a lot of videos and you'll see a lot of people present and they'll say, we have this, you have forget it, and you still don't know what the product is. Here's how much money was made with this. No, no, no. It's not a good approach and it, it gives the industry a bad rep. Next. Too many fake scripted. Look, I remember uh, one of the reasons why I didn't like going to church. One of the reasons why I was an atheist for 25 years. Let me tell you why I was an atheist for 25 years. I was an atheist and an agnostic. It would always change. And I wouldn't like going to church. Here's why. 
People had the best scripts in the world. Oh, praise the Lord, my brother. God bless you. You know John 3, 16? Oh, my gosh. And I remember this one guy one time pulled me aside, and he says, there's nothing more annoying than a Christian man who's learned the script but never lives it themselves. This one guy I met in Pasadena. And in the world of business, and especially in network marketing, there are people that know the script. You know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, oh, it's the... It sounds the same, but there's no results and nothing going on. Too much scripted without anything really happening in their lives. It's very obvious and people can read it. Next, red flags to pay attention to. Um, you know, I already told you about no real products. So there was a company called Zeke Rewards. Zeke Rewards was a company that came out that would tell you. And I remember one guy came and met with me at Maggiano. It's very, very smart guy. This guy came and met with me and he was a very open guy. Here's what he told me about Zeke Rewards. They ended up going out of business, and not only going out of business, the owner owes people, I think, $600 million that Attorney General shut them down. If you go online and type them up, you'll see it. It's companies like that. They give bad rep to all these industries. I mean, it, it, people like that don't exist in the business, don't need to be in a business world, right? So you have Zeke Rewards comes out and tells people you can bid, 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 and you put $1,000, you're going to make interest, and it's going to be $2,000 and $5,000. And this guy's telling me at Maggio, and he says, Pat, I know this company's not going to last for another two years. He says, but we can do this and maybe we can make a million dollars in the next six, 12 months. I don't, want, I don't have desire to do anything like that. I have this next best business opportunity to share with you. This was, and it went out of business. Not effective. Not effective. So you got to make sure there's a real product. And then last but not least is the obvious one. If you just make money from recruiting, that's the pyramid scheme. There was a company back in the days. It was called 2x2.net. And 2x2.net, what it did is it allowed you to buy seven spots. Let me tell you what seven spots is. You literally would buy your own position, then you would buy two other positions, and you would buy two other positions. It was $420 per position. Never got involved, but I studied. I had to find out exactly what was going on in the marketplace. So one position, two, so $2,800. The attorney general came. They were blowing. Guys were rolling in Lamborghinis. Every single place you saw in LA was a Lamborghini. Green Lamborghini, purple Lamborghini. Everywhere you saw Lamborghinis with two by two that and a sticker on the side. They eventually went out of business. Why? Because... You can't just buy multiple spots. That is not the real way of doing business. And their only product was a portal, and that's not how the money was being made. Eventually got shut down. There's got to be a real tangible product, and you cannot make money from just recruiting people. When they pay 420, you make 200 bucks. That cannot happen if there's not a real product that's taking place. So now, that being the common criticism. So now let's talk about the truth about MLM and network marketing, which is an area I would have liked for... John Oliver to touch up on, which we will hear in the video. Number one, number one, out of 100 people in network market, you know how many people make it? Is it 50? Is it 40, 30, 20? How many is it? How many people you think make it in network marketing? One make it. One in 100 make it in network marketing. No matter what anybody tells you, everybody wants to brag that on our company, more people make it and let's define what is making it. Making it is not making $17 an hour. Making it is not making $100 an hour. Making it is making a full-time salary where you can actually pay your bills and live off of it, et cetera, et cetera. That to me is making it. You're making fifty, sixty, eighty, hundred thousand dollars uh, a year income. You can survive off of it. Now, here's a challenge. A lot of people will watch it and they're going to say, oh my gosh, why would I ever do it if it's only one in a hundred? Here's the truth. In real estate, the famous Tom Ferry, who is the big real estate guy that trains everybody and people pay tens of thousands of dollars to go learn from Tom Ferry. He says it himself. In real estate, 87% of real estate agents fail within five years. Think about that. They put five years of their life in real estate and it fails. How much money do you think they lost in that five years? How much marketing dollars? Are, five years. Now, here's a question. How about we go and knock real estate? How about we go do videos and knock real estate? Does that mean real estate doesn't work? No. Real estate is hard work. Real estate is hard work, but it works. And even those 13% that make it, what part of the 13% do you think actually make decent money? You think all that makes six figures? No way. A small portion makes six figures. Most of them make 20, 30, 40, $50,000 per year. And some of them are cops and government workers that do real estate part-time on the side. They sell two, two uh, properties a year. The average real estate agent, the average real estate agent, do you know how many properties the average real estate agent sells per year? It's one to two per year. One to two. There are a lot of rock stars that sell 100 per year. I know a guy named Tom Hopkins who broke the record in Chatsworth and sold 365 in a year. He wrote a book called How to Master the Art of Selling, but most real estate agents sell one property per year. We're going to say real estate doesn't work? Of course it works, but there's a part of that you hear with network marketing. Not many make it. Next one, it's a ton of work. This is what people in network marketing and MLM are afraid of saying, 
And if you want to change the reputation of your industry, stop saying that you're going to be a millionaire in two, three, four, five years if you only do this, this, that. It's a ton of work in network marketing. It's a ton of work. You're not going to work 40 hours a week. It's a lot of work in network marketing and MLM. But here's the challenge. Having kids is a lot of work. We got three kids right now. Our youngest one that's six months old. She turns six months this week. We're up two, three times per night. My wife was saying this morning, she says, Pat, you know what I wish to have for Christmas? What? One night where I can sleep six hours straight. Now, are people going to stop having sex and making babies? No, but it's a lot of work. Network marketing is a lot of work. So whoever, whether you're watching this because you're considering it, or whether you're watching this because you hate it and you're a critic, or whether you're watching this because you're in it, the truth is, stop saying it's easy to become a millionaire because it's a lot of work. If you're thinking about it, you want to do it, you need to work a lot. And if you're a critic, you're going to say whatever you want to say. But that's exactly what it is with the marketplace. Next. Three, they oversell. It's too much overselling. It's way too much overselling. Yeah, you know what it's like? It's like the guy that goes on a date with a girl and oversells himself. You know what you're doing for yourself? You're setting yourself up for failure. Why would you tell the girl you're the greatest thing since sliced bread? And you know, my second cousin was Jesus, and the other side, you know, was, it was uh, Martin Luther King, and my father's related to Lincoln, Honest Abe, and I'm just this just fantastic guy is who I am. And she's going to be like, oh my gosh, honey, mom. You won't believe who I met, and then you're disappointing her the next day, and it's a breakup. No, look, I got problems. Don't oversell it. If you're going to do network marketing, tell people it's hard work. It's this, it's that, it's this. However, if you make it, life could be this. Will you do it? Yes. Okay, let me go out and do it. Present it that way, you would be amazed how much more approachable and open people would be versus giving this whole gimmick on how easy it is. Next, number four, focus on your customers. I think the problem with network marketing is it's so focused on reps selling that no one focused on the customers, that's the problem. It's a problem. Customers are extremely important to your business. So take care of your customers. Treat them right. Show them a good time. Actually get what's right for them. Somebody asked me the other day and they said, Pat, why is sales so easy to you? I said, I have a very simple thing with sales. I have, it's, it's sales is a piece of cake to me. Here's why sales is a piece of cake to me. Because in my mind, anytime I sell, I ask the one question. One question. If I was that person, would I buy it from this person? And if I can say yes, I can easily sell. If I can't say yes, I can't sell. That's the problem. This is why if you don't believe in your product, you cannot sell that product. You got to be your number one people to your customers. If you're in network marketing, you want to have an edge on everybody else, why don't you treat your customers a million times better than everybody else treats them? And look what will happen. Why don't you go to your company and say, let's focus on our customers a million times than anybody else does it. Look what happens to your company. Why don't you bring it up? Why don't you talk about it? Because they are right when they say no one focuses on the customers because no one treats the customers right. All they're worried about is the next commission that's coming in. Not all the time. Those that grow, they are customer focused. Those that don't, they're not customer focused. They're purely on profit focused. Number five, abusive way of marketing on social media. I had a kid, remember that one kid that sent me a message on Facebook and I responded back to him. I said, listen, I can tell you're in multi-level marketing. I said, copy pasting this script and sending it to everybody without doing research on the person doesn't work. And he responded back to me, this knucklehead, you know what he said? He says, well, you have no clue what you're talking about because you'd be amazed how many people are saying yes to it. Just because you got it doesn't mean it. And I was like, wow, at least you're being honest about what you're telling me. You have that much audacity to tell me. But I can tell you, you got to make sure you're not abusive and you're not a, the annoying marketer. You know, be a smooth operator. Be gentle about it. Don't be this overbearing, annoying salesperson that no one wants to do business with. You just don't want to be that person. And sometimes that happens in our world. Next, scams do exist. It's very important to know this. Scams do exist. Zeke Rewards was a scam. They do exist. There are scams out there. Not everybody's a scam. Now, here's a challenge. Do you remember back in the days, a guy in high school, we talked about this the other day, a guy in high school dates a girl, and the girl breaks up with him. Do you remember what the guy used to go tell around everybody what she is? Oh, you know what she is? She's all, she's all, all, all. You know, she's, 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 she goes with everybody. She's like, whatever she doing. Why? The guy had to say it because the guy has to justify why she left him, right? And you know what's crazy? Do you know what's crazy? Do you know what's crazy? Most people believed it. Most people believed it. And you know, today, if you think about high school right now, and right now, make a list of three girls in high school that had the reputation of being a, you know what? 
Two of them are probably wrong. Maybe one of them is right. But the other two, an insecure boyfriend told everybody, and it's not true. You know that. I know that. You know how that works. Guys are the most insecure people in the world. They're going to go out there and say something like that. Next thing you know, boom, everybody, we have to judge because we're so powerful. I'm a part of it. We're a part of this community. Okay? So that doesn't mean that's the case. So a lot of people like to say, oh, real estate is a scam. Keller Williams is a scam. You know, New York Life is a scam. Oh, this company is a scam. That company is a scam. That is like you being the insecure guy that a girl left you or you couldn't hack it because it was so hard, but you called it that. But the truth is there are some scams out there. There are some scams out there. Fortunately, eventually they get caught and they get shut down. The government is not set up in a way to allow scams to last for a long time. They only, they have a lifespan. A person cannot be a criminal all their lives not finding a way in prison. Many criminals end up in prison. You can't just go on like that for the rest of your life. Number eight, number eight. I wish more people would talk about this. I wish more people would talk about number eight. I think I'm on number seven right now. I, th I wish more people would talk about number seven. It is this. If you are going to do network marketing, here's a timeline. It's 10-year commitment. It's not six months or you're gonna, I'm going to give it a shot for one year. Nope, not going to work. It's a 10-year commitment. Do you know why it's a 10-year commitment? Because anything you do is a 10-year commitment. Any business you do is a 10-year commitment. Working out doesn't happen overnight. People say, oh, Pat got swole. I've been working out since I was 14 years old. My body has a memory. My muscles have a memory. This didn't happen accidentally. I've been training since 14. That's 24 years. This didn't happen accidentally. So if you're going to do anything with network marketing or MLM, 10-year rule. One-year rule, go to another business. Matter of fact, if you want to follow one-year rule, go get a job. Go get a job. Two-year-old, go get a job. Five-year-old, go get a job. Ten-year-old, you can be an entrepreneur and a business owner. And if you want to give network marketing a shot, it's, it's ten years. Number eight, you need to understand that network marketing is a very easy target for comedians, for media, for everybody. Why? Think about it this way. Comedians and media, they are typically three different things that's very, very easy to target. You can't be naive and fall for it. One of them is capitalism. It's very easy to bash capitalism. Very, if you want to listen to any comedian or media, they love bashing capitalism. Why? Because almost everyone I know tried a business at a time and they failed. And they have to say, that girl's a, you know what? It's their out. Capitalism is hard. Running a business is hard. It comes with anxiety attacks. It comes with panic attacks. It comes with challenges at times. It comes with you almost losing everything. It requires you to work 80 hours a week. Most people don't want to do that. So why is it easy to uh, not capitalism? Because capitalism at times can, you know, people can fail and it doesn't work and they have to bash it. Now let's take capitalism out. You don't have this video to watch. You don't have Twitter. You don't have Facebook. You don't have anything to watch. Because an inventor invented capitalism. A capitalist invented all these products. Now another one that media likes to take shots at is church, religion. It's very easy. It's very easy to take shots at churches. Why? You know, churches, there's a part of it that I can see being annoying. You go to a church, you sit up there, and a pastor gets up. If you don't do this, you're going straight to hell. And if you do this, you're going straight to this. And somebody's like, I, got, I already know I'm going to hell, man. I just want to know I have a shot in heaven. You know, sometimes these pastors get up on front of me. We're going to hell, and let me tell you what hell looks like. Fire burning everywhere. Your skin's going to be burning. Man, I know my skin's going to be burning. I just want a second chance. Can I get a second chance? Please. So there's a reason why churches get bashed the way they do. They're a target. They're an easy target. And network marketing is also an easy target. You know why? Because anything you paint as perfect is an easy target. Capitalism is not perfect. Church is not perfect. Network marketing is not perfect. You paint it perfect, you're an easy target. Stop painting it as perfect. Stop painting your business as being perfect. It's not perfect. There's problems. I can't go out on double dates with couples that say the following. We have zero problems in our marriage. Awesome. We will never have dinner again because we do. My wife and I have problems. We fight regularly. We fought yesterday on Thanksgiving. And you know what's crazy? We're very comfortable about it. We're very comfortable about it. I don't care. I didn't marry you. I married my wife. I don't need to convince you my marriage is perfect. I have health issues sometimes. I have things I need to work on sometimes. I have issues I got to work on with me sometimes. And paint it as real. If you paint it as perfect, people are annoyed by perfection. So network marketers, do yourself a favor and stop painting yourself as being perfect. Because you are not perfect. The more imperfections you talk about, the more people are willing to forgive you and listen to what you got to talk about. You open up the door for people who want to listen to you. Next, there are tax benefits. 
There are tax benefits, but here's the problem sometimes with network marketers. They have no clue how to manage their money. And because they have no clue how to manage their money, the first thing they do is spend all their money, buy some nice car, buy some nice stuff, buy this Rolex, this company goes out of business, they lose everything, now they own IRS. Money, it takes 15 years to pay a lien, you can't get a decent job, you can't get finance in a house, boom. So if you are in the world of network marketing, do me, if, if you're a leader or a CEO or running a company, teach your people on how to manage your finances as well. Be disciplined with them on them paying their quarterly taxes. Talk to them what to do with their savings and set some money aside. Give them some, don't just get them to buy stuff because the more stuff they buy, the more locked into your company. It's like, hey, the more people lease cars and the more people, they have to stick, it's our retention plan because they have to work hard. Come on, man, don't treat people like that. These are their families. If you're gonna do it, people perform better. The more savings they have, they're more valuable to your company. I want you to have a couple hundred thousand dollars in cash savings. Slow down before you buy that. You need to have some savings in place. Take that route with people that you're developing. Number, nine, number 10. Here's number 10. And this is the part that some people are going to like, some people are going to hate. Network marketing actually works. It actually works. It is a $35 billion a year business. Uh, it has created a lot of jobs. Uh, I'm down the street. Every time I go home on this freeway here, I see Mary Kay to my left. You know how many women I've met that talk about Mary Kay in a way that she changed their lives? Do you know how many? Do you know how many men I've met that when they bring up the name Rich DeVos and Jay Van Andel, I've never been part of Amway. Every time somebody's brought up the name of Rich DeVos and Jay Van Andel, who actually had a chance to work with them directly, you should see what they talk about. People get emotional saying, this man changed my life. You know how many times people bring up the name Art Williams and they say, this man completely changed my life. Who touched Art Williams, he changed my life in a completely different way. How many people, endless amount of people have said this? So what's the point? What's the point? It works. Um, I think the industry is an industry that can be very effective. I think the people in the industry are so competitive sometimes that they try to paint it too perfect and it backfires on them. And I think the industry collectively, whether you guys are part of this organization called the DSN, collectively the industry needs to pivot a little bit and start deciding how they want to brand themselves for the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years. And you got a big opportunity to make adjustment today. There are some guys that are positively affecting the marketplace in a very good way, and I like the fact that that's taking place. So now, that being taken place, let me go into compensation plans. Let me go into compensation plans. Were you saying something? Okay, let me go into compensation plans on what you have. Typically, in the world of network marketing, you have three comps. You have linear, you have binary, you have matrix. Let me give you my problems with a couple of these, and you'll see why it is. And you can be the judge of Remember, I didn't make this video to make you happy, because network marketers are not gonna like this video, and people who don't like network marketing are not gonna like this video. And a part of this video, network marketers are going to like, and a part of this video, people who hate network marketing are going to like. I'm trying to give you both arguments, which is what you're supposed to do as a talk show host or somebody that's teaching classes, not being leaned to one, one side, which is what John Oliver did. Linear has the longest lifespan. Here's why. Because in linear, you actually have to work. If in linear you don't work, you can get passed, by, passed up by somebody, and someone can absolutely pass you up, and you can make no money in linear. you got to work in linear. But guess what? Linear's last. Amway's linear. Mar uh, Herbalife is linear. Um, many of these companies that last, New Skin's linear. Uh, Arbonne, Avon, these are linear companies that they have. Amway, I think last year did $9.5 billion. I think uh, uh, Avon did $10 billion or some number like that. Linear works. You can go get 50 recruits direct to you. That works. Binary, problematic. Most people that watch this who are part of some binary companies, they will message me and they'll say things. And you can say whatever you want, all good, because there's a lot of binary companies with decent products. Here's a problem with binary. Binary is what people will say, well, guess what you gotta do? All you gotta do is there's a breakaway leg. You'll hear some people brag about how many people they have on their team. I have 6,000 people on my team. They have 6,000 people on their team because their upline is a killer, and that guy put 6,000 on one leg, and that leg took away, it's a breakaway leg, and they forgot to match the other leg. So they have 6,000 on one side, and they have three on the other, so it's three cousins. They don't have a big organization. They just know how to sell you on what they did, right? So binary is one third, two third to get a check. So for instance, if you get two recruits on one side and four recruits on the other side, you cycle $100. One third, two third, one third. So every time you get two four, two four, you get $100, $100. So you get 20, 40, $1,000. 200, 400, $10,000. 2,000, 4,000, $100,000. And then there's binaries that are 50, 50. That you gotta get three, three even on both sides. As much as I'm not a fan of binary because I'm a math guy and I grew up being the kid that just was absolutely bored in army. I went and got a trigonometry math analysis book and all I did was 
mathematical formulas, because I love math, 50-50 has more of a shot of making it than one-third, two-third. One-third, two-third, this is, again, guys, if you call me and tell me to sit down with you, again, I get so many requests from CEOs saying, I want you to sit down and break down our comp plan. I'm not doing it. I run a very, I'm happy with my business. I don't need you $100,000 to study your comp plan. Not right now. I'm running a financial form right now for myself. 50-50 is more likely to make it than one-third, two-third. Then the last one is matrix. Matrix, you got to be a little bit careful about because matrix, this is how it goes. Hey, you get recruited and anybody the company recruits next goes under you. So that's the first recruit. Recruit number two goes here. Number three here. Number four here. Number five here. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So this is how it goes. So they say if you get recruited and anybody the company recruits goes next to you, then you get checks. $6, $8, $60, $80, $600 a month, $800 a month. Yes, it works. It only works generally if you're in the first four levels. After that, it's pretty much over with. Why? Because here's how math works. Math goes 3, 9, 27, 81, 243, 729, 2100, 6300, 18,900. You get the idea. 55,000, 165,000. Then you lose it. So then you have nothing else going on with your legs. Okay? So matrix is fine if you're above in this level. After this level, you got nothing going on with matrix. So that's the problem I have with matrix. If a company is linear, at least you have to work to make it. I am a fan of for any system that you have to work to make money. These two, they sell the lazy aspect of network marketing. I am not a fan when people sell the lazy aspect of network marketing. I'm a very big fan of a leader who's willing to tell the truth that you got to work hard to make in the business. That's how you get people to respect. That's how you get people with credibility who actually are willing to take a look at your business model to be a part of it. So now, 11 reasons why, benefits of why people get involved in network marketing, which I think... I think it's a very good thing. I think it's a very good thing, these 11 things. Again, I would like John to talk about this a little bit because there is some good in network marketing as well. And here's what it is. Number one, any organization that gets people to read books, I'm all for it. If I'm part of a, you know, speaking, what is that speaking thing that teaches people how to uh, uh, speak? What's it called? There's a name for it, right? Uh, you, you know what I'm talking about, the speaking yeah, thing, yeah. Um, co- Toastmasters, Toastmasters. If they make you read, I'm all for it. If you go to a leadership uh, martial arts guy and you pay 200 bucks a month to learn how to learn martial arts and the guy makes you read two books a month, I'm all for it. Okay, now what books, obviously, I'm talking like elevating your mind. I'm not talking about go read Fifty Shades of Grey. I'm not for it. I'm talking about books that really elevate your mind. If there's one thing I can tell you about a lot of people that becomes... By the way, there are a lot of celebrities in America and a lot of politicians that you know in America that you know their names. If I gave you their names, you would say, no way. That at one point, we're in network marketing. Many of them you admire. They just don't advertise it. Many of them you admire. You just don't. Many, many of them are in Hollywood. They're in sports. They're in TV. They're governors. They're senators. Some even presidents. At one point, they were part of network marketers. Network marketing. Whatever gets you to read books and elevate your thinking, I'm for it. I support that. Number two. Good people to be around. You know, sometimes people are down. You want to be around other people. It's good to be around other people that elevate you. They lift you up. It eliminates shyness. There's some people that are very shy about being around other people. It's good to be around other people because it opens you up. You get some people that are very timid. Network marketing will open you up uh, in a business. Number three, better positive attitude. There's a lot of people that better positive. Oh, my gosh, I'm so excited. And it impacts every aspect of your life. Number four, audacity. It teaches audacity. You kind of have to talk to strangers. And I don't care what it is, anybody that's got the audacity to talk to strangers, it's going to benefit you in whatever other career you do. Let's just say you get involved in network marketing and you never stick around. And, but you're in it for three to five years and you pick up some of these bad and good habits. Your next company, you're going to excel. Someone's going to say, oh my gosh, he's amazing. He's so great. Because at some point, you have to be in network marketing and learn audacity. Next, leads into other businesses. You know, if you fail in network marketing, you're, you're going to at least say, if I want to make money, I got to be an entrepreneur. You may just go become a realtor and make a lot of money as a real estate agent. You may go become a financial. You may go into a completely different business, but you learned the freedom aspect comes from entrepreneurship, so you do it. Next, increases work ethic. I'm all about people working hard. I'm all about people increasing their work ethic, especially younger generation. Number seven, increase, uh, uh, helps with public speaking skills. Uh, if you want to move up, you got to learn how to speak. I did a video once called, uh, uh, what is it, how to uh, speak like Casanova? Is that what the title no, is? Not, not, not what was it called? Um, uh, something about public speaking. What was the name of it? Different types of public speakers. Let's put the thumbnail here, whatever it is. Dennis, let's remember to put the thumbnail so you know what it is. Uh, we'll put the link. Rebecca, let's put the link as well so people can see it. 
Public speaking. If you're going to move up, you need to be a better public speaker. I used to be terrible. Used to be terrible. Eventually, when you give many, you get good at it. Communication uh, improves. Recognition is next, where you learn how to recognize other people, and you get recognized. There's a part of the recognition aspect that happens in a business. It instills a lot of confidence. That's number 10. And then number 11 is, that I'll say, number 11 is, uh, what I'll talk about is the fact that there are a lot of people that there are a lot of people that either had a death in a family or they got a divorce or something bad happened in their lives that they need to be around a positive environment. Network marketing offers that. Simple as that. And I would rather have somebody go, you know, churches, let's just say churches are all con. Let's just say every single church in the world is a con artist. Let's just buy that argument and let's take it from there. Let's just say that is what it is. And let's just call churches that God doesn't exist. It's just a nonprofit organization. How many churches have saved marriages? How many millions of marriages have been saved by churches? How many millions of churches have given a person a place to live while they didn't have a place to live? How many? I don't care what denomination we're talking about. How many churches helped a man or a woman, a woman lost her husband to another younger girl that he left, and she was suicidal, went to a church, and she didn't co commit suicide, and she still lived. Sometimes network marketing attracts people that they come in and they stick around because of positive mind. They say, I got a better life to live. I don't need to give up my life. And they still get, so there's a lot of positive to it as well to keep in mind. And then last but not least, Pat, if I'm going to get involved with a company and I'm considering it, what should I be thinking about? Let's go through it. Number one, find an industry and a product that's going to be around for 30 years because uh, my assumption is you want to be a legitimate person doing network marketing the right way where you're not changing companies every other year. And you don't want to do that. You don't want that reputation. The people that make the most money in network marketing typically chose one company and stayed in it the longest. That's the key. If I meet guys that say, I made 10 million, I made 7 million. Oh, really? what I've been with this company for 22 years. Oh, wow. And I've met a lot of them. Believe me, I know many of them that make 5 million plus, many of them. And they'll generally be one, one, one company 20 years, 25 years, 22 years, 17 years, 16 years, 11 years, 7 years. They've been with one for a long time. So if you're going to do it the right way, choose a product that's going to be around 30 years from now. This is why I don't recommend technology, because it changes all the time. You've got to choose a product that's going to be around 30 years from now. Number two, avoid companies that are major markups. I have a problem with major markups and network marketing companies. Let me explain what I mean by this. Sometimes companies, to pay bigger bonuses, say this product costs $5 to make. They sell the product for $50, and they have to use that $45 to pay bonuses off. You don't have to sell the product for $50. You can sell this product for $20, and you're going to be fine. You know, no, normally the product needs to be 40%, 40%. So if it's 10 bucks, $4. Make sense? Not $4, $40, which is some network marketing companies do. And the market doesn't help you. I'll tell you why. There was a company a few years ago that was selling a Noni drink for $40 a bottle. And you would do an auto ship. I know this because my sister was a part of it at some point. And you would do an auto ship and you would buy 10 bottles a month, whatever the number was. But they sold $40 a bottle. And they were blowing up. And then all of a sudden Costco came out with identical same story for $9.99. And you know what happened to them? Then they had to say, well, no, our, our Noni berries come from a special place because it's what, oh, come on. You really think you're going to convince me that your berries come from a different place? It's Tahitian. It's the same exact thing. $9.99, $40. And then all of a sudden everybody started walking away. They took a big hit. Today, no one talks about that company. You haven't heard about that company since 2007, 2008. That's right. That's right. So, so markups, be very careful and find out what it costs to make the product. Number three, choose the right group of people to be running with uh, because it's very important. When I say choose the right group of people to be running with, look at the top on who it is. Do you share common values? Do you share common principles? What do they stand for? How stable are the people? Um, what do they, I mean, really, you got to watch that. And is it a community that you can run with for a long time? Are they fun? Do you connect with them? Do you have commonalities? Do they stand for, do you look for that. Because, look, I can tell you one thing. A lot of people are with their families on weekends. But you're going to spend more time with the people you work with sometimes than your own family. You may as well like the people you're working with. So pay very close attention to the culture and the group of people that they have. Number four is timing of the company. So if timing's got four different levels, you got survival the first two years, then you have formulation, which is two to five years, two to seven years, then you have explosion, which is seven years to 15, 
and then you have plateau, you're 15 and on, and then they come back up again. It depends what you want to do. If you want an established company that's been on for a long time and you don't want a lot of, you know, explosion is not going to happen because a company after the 15th year, the explosion part's already gone. It's gone already, typically. But if you want a stable company, go with a company that's been on for 20 plus years. If you want a company that is about to go through an explosion, choose three to seven years to be a part of. If you can be in the seven to 15, you're in a good sweet spot. First two years avoid. And I know it's just when I say this, first two years avoid because if you can hack it through the first two years, great. But the first two years, it's like 95% chance the company's not going to be around. So the first two years, and some people tell you other feedback. This is purely my feedback. I may be wrong. I'm giving you my feedback. This is my counsel. Number five, a compensation plan with longevity. Not a compensation plan that's good for today. Longevity. Company needs to profit. Rule number one, company goes out of business, you lose reputation. Company needs to stick around long term. They got to have a strong compensation plan. Number six, a worthy cause. Like you will know if somebody is, earlier uh, today, Mario and I were talking, actually last night we were talking during dinner and we mentioned three social media names. Remember that? I won't say the names right now, but I mentioned three, three names. And I said, let me ask you a question. All these three are on social media. Tell me the most authentic person out of these three that you believe. That you don't have to like them. One curses a lot, one does this one. Who do you like the most? And everybody said the same name. I said, why? He says, I believe him. I believe what he says is authentic. And a company that has a real cause, you will know based on how authentic the people are at the top. If they overdo it in a way that's not, you will know it. It's, by the way, it doesn't take a lot to figure people out. It's pretty easy. Just pay attention on how many times they talk about it. If they talk about it all the time and there's deep-rooted stories to back up why they believe in that, then there's some validity to it. Okay, so last but not least, last but not least, if you can be part of a company where you can own a piece of the company, because the one thing about Network Mart, look, the, the guy who ran Excel, the company became a, mo many, many people made a lot of money. Amway's made many, many people a lot of, a lot of money, a lot of money. Prime, Ariel Williams, you know, New, New York, you know, you got Keller, they've made a lot of money, lots of money that made other people as well. If you can find a way to be part of the company's equity plan where you can own a piece of the company in case if it goes public or in case the company uh, gets acquired or something, even better for you because you participate in that. Uh, I'm not talking bonuses, I'm talking profit sharing, purely equity. Those are two things I'd be looking for if I were you. And at the end of the day, you gotta work your tail off or, or else none of this stuff exists. So today in this video, I probably said something you don't like and I probably said something you agree with. It's irrelevant. I wanted to give you both arguments for you to be able to find out for yourself whether you're a critic, whether you're in it, whether you're somebody that's thinking about getting in it, or whether you own and run the company, you're one of the leaders at the top. I hope something here you got to figure out a way to improve your game plan or change some of your beliefs and opinions about the industry of network marketing. With that being said, here's what I want you to do. This is a type of a video that you may know somebody that's either in network marketing or somebody that's thinking about getting into network marketing. Share this video with them. I would love for this video purely out of an educational purposes to spread like wildfire for people to change and adjust their ways in the network marketing world that's hurting a lot of people. And number two, for people that have put a blanket opinion about this industry to say, yeah, you know what, that makes sense. I never saw the industry from this point of view. So both ways, I think there's a lot of ways that uh, the industry can make adjustments and improve in. And I'm doing some that, that I'm, I haven't done recently in the videos is, Mario suggested, he says, Pat, I think we need to turn this into a PDF so you can download and print out and read and do whatever you're gonna do with it. So you need to visit patrickbedebe.com. Okay, you'll go to patrickbedebe.com. And if you find this video, you need to find this video. On the bottom of this video, there'll be a PDF. Click on the PDF, download it. You'll need to subscribe your email to the newsletter that we send out on a weekly basis. Download the PDF, use it in any way you want. And if you wanna share that with other people as well, tell them about the link. They can download it as well. And then they can train it any way they want to do themselves. Now, if you saw this video on a completely different website, because it's going to be shared on many different websites, and you come back to patrickbaydavid.com, there's a search side that you can go and click on. Just type in the word MLM or network marketing. This video will pop up and go to the bottom. You'll see the link. You can still get it. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, please do so. We are going to get this channel. Our goal is to get to a million subs by the end of 2017. There's a lot of different videos on this channel. This is purely an entrepreneurship channel. This is not a, this is the only video we've ever done on network marketing or MLM. We have 350 videos on this channel. 
the only video we've ever done on network marketing MLM is this video because this was highly requested after what John Oliver said, so we decided to do this video. So be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so. By the way, we're already getting a ton of people that are sending us new pillows because we have a new contest. We need a new pillow for 2017. So if you're somewhat competitive and you think you can send us a creative pillow to replace this pillow that we've made, if we use your pillow, we will give you love and say that you send a pillow in the entire year of 2017, I'll be using your pillow in every single video that we have. You can send a new pillow to 5001 Spring Valley Road, suite number 1155 East, Dallas, Texas 75244. You see it on the screen as well. Send it all the way before the end of the year and we may possibly consider using your pillow on 2017's video. With that being said, you got questions, thoughts, comment on the bottom. With that being said, have a great day, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye.